Hey everyone, so before I get into today's topic, I just want to talk about a few other updates, I guess. Right when I started doing this, the dog starts barking. It wasn't barking all day. <sighs> Whatever. So, with my new art channel, if you haven't subscribed to it, then go do that because all of my art videos are going to be on there from now on. And speaking of which, I'm in the middle of trying to set up an Etsy right now so that I can sell some of the things that I make out of clay and, you know, beads and stuff on there. And I'm going to be putting up videos of my items on my art channel. So if you want to check out those things, then again, go subscribe to my art channel. Uh, aside from that, I'm going to eventually, probably sometime soon, make a gaming channel. Not because it's something that I'm heavily like trying to pursue or something, but I do upload video games. And since I am splitting up all my stuff, the only thing left for me to separate from this channel is the gameplays. So that'll happen eventually. And because I only have a few gaming videos, I'm probably just going to upload them all over there. Or at least at least the Phenotopia ones I'm going to re-upload for now. Uh, because I do want to go back to that, but busy. So, Wow, I actually remembered what I was forgetting throughout the entire video. It was, I believe I forgot to mention that I'm working on a project. That's what it was. I'm trying to open up an Etsy store or, you know, like put stuff up on my Etsy, whatever you want to say. I've never done Etsy before. And I'm also working on a project for my art channel. Like I'm, I'm trying to do this like short 30 to 40 second animation, but even though it's only like 30 seconds or so, it's still a lot of drawings. So it's taking me a minute. You know, I'm going to build the hype up on this channel so I can try out that premiere feature. And I'm going to officially put it up on my art channel. So you should go over there um, to watch it, uh, you know, and subscribe. But yeah, I'm working on that. And I'm going to do a video soon enough about why I stopped doing animations. It's not that complicated of a story, but I'll talk about it after I finish the animation. That was the thing that I was forgetting this whole time. So back to whatever I was saying, wherever I decided to insert this part of the video is that it i think that's it i don't know if i forgot something i'll bring it up later so moving on i've been wanting to do another opinion video but i just wasn't sure what to talk about because there's a lot of things i do want to talk about but as i've said before some of those things have to wait until later for reasons that i can't explain right now but everything will be addressed eventually i finally thought of something that has been bugging me for a while and that I can talk about now, which is just basic insecurity. So just to get right into it, I wanna talk about insecurity in the sense where, um, or in the sense of how it affects you with your day-to-day -day life and how most people, well, everyone is raised as a child to be insecure in different ways. I don't have a long list of all the examples Maybe I'll create one eventually because there is a long list. But you know, when your parents tell you things like look presentable or make a good impression and things like that, those things along with a million other things teach children to be insecure because it teaches children to live their life based off of the approval of others instead of off of their own approval. And, you know, I've talked before about how most parents are abusive and most people are abusive. So, you know, then the, of course I don't expect for people to teach their kids real confidence. You know, if anything, they'll teach them faux confidence. But in order to abuse someone, you do have to make them insecure or dependent on you. So the thing that I want to focus on most this time around, and I'll probably revisit this subject every now and then in the future, is the benefit of the doubt, which I've talked about before, and how the benefit of the doubt is the worst thing that you can give someone. It almost always hurts someone innocent in the situation, because a lot of the time the benefit of the doubt is you going against your own natural instincts on someone, or going against evidence that you see pointing towards a person and you just assume it can't be that bad. <laughs> so with me personally, you know, we've all done it because we're all taught that since we were children um, to give the benefit of the doubt. It's something that we do by instinct and it's something that you need to fight against. 
So I'm not saying like shame on you if you've ever done it. Everybody does it. It's just an instinctual thing at this point because you're taught it since you were a baby, but you have to fight against it and recognize when you're doing it so you can stop because it's really a toxic way of thinking. And the worst things that I've ever done have always been because I didn't listen to my gut instinct, like my biggest mistakes in life. And I didn't do anything that bad. Like I didn't, you know, uh, uh, ruin someone's life or something, but just my personal mistakes, things that I regret the most always came down to listening to other people instead of myself. And it's hard to believe in yourself when everyone is telling you the opposite of reality. I understand that. And it's frustrating trying to explain this to people. Like, I'll come across people who are insecure, but, you know, no one wants to admit that they're insecure. And, again, since most people are narcissistic and sociopathic, being a narcissist means you're insecure. Being a sociopath means you're insecure. So, I talk to people who are, you know, narcissistic and stuff. And they're insecure and they just, they don't get it. So I try to explain to them, okay, well, you know, if um, everyone tells you the opposite of reality, you're eventually going to believe it. It's been scientifically proven. They're like, no, not me, not me. No, you can't make me believe anything I don't want to believe. And it's just, ugh. I even try to give them scenarios, but they don't listen. And again, it's because I'm telling you the end result so obviously you can just say no that won't happen because you already know what the plan is but um in real life people don't give you a fair warning of how they're going to manipulate you you know and they don't that's that ruins the whole point of manipulating you you're not supposed to know what's happening so yeah if I tell you in advance that the fact I'm about to tell you is wrong and then I desperately try to get you to believe it of course you'll see it coming and then be like nope I won't believe you But if I don't tell you what I'm going to do first and then do the thing that's been scientifically proven to work, you're going to fall for it. So I try to explain to people to just imagine a world where you see that the sky is blue, but everyone that you come across tells you that the sky is green. Your neighbors, your friends, your doctors, strangers, people who have never met each other. Everyone is telling you the sky is green. And every time you look up at the sky, it's blue. Eventually, you're going to think that you're crazy. <laughs> and you're going to try to convince yourself that the sky is green. And you will you even go to doctors, get your eyes checked, and you have 20-20 vision. But every single time you look up at the sky, it's not the color that everyone says it is. And it, it blows your mind. Like, you, there's no explanation for it. You'll lose your fucking mind. So you're either going to conform and just believe that your eyes are fucked up in some way. You'd have to believe that everyone's wrong. <laughs> or you would have to, you know, believe that... Really, are they mowing the... I, I don't care what noises are in the background. They want to mow the fucking lawn dogs bark if you know a terrorist wants to blow themselves up outside fuck it I'm just gonna keep going point is you either have to believe them or not and going against those odds when everyone is telling you that fact you lose your mind and I've been in a lot of situations where you know especially with victims of abuse they understand this where you're in an isolated environment where people are being abusive to you And then you try to tell others that you're being abused and everyone gives the abuser the benefit of the doubt. And I'll get into why that is in a second. But since everyone is giving them the benefit of the doubt and everyone is telling them, are you sure that that's what happened? You sure that they did that? And these people don't know each other. They're strangers and they're all asking you, are you sure? Or they tell you, ah, it's not that bad. No, they're not like that. They don't even know them, but they just will not believe you. And... The logic of it, you know, why they sound so stupid is like, you don't even know this person and you don't believe me. (laughs) Uh, You know, or the fact that you're saying, am I sure that what just happened to me a few minutes ago happened to me? Like you, you weren't even there and you're still questioning if that's what happened to me. You know, things like that. The first few times it happens, you just think those people are stupid. It's the same way for everybody. It's like, oh, what's wrong with you? You're stupid. But then you go to the next person, they say the same thing. You go to the next person, they say the same thing. And the next person, and the next person. And then you start to think the problem has to be you. Because if everyone else is telling you the same thing, and they don't know each other, 
And it's the same responses every time. The problem has to be you. That's what you tell yourself. And it's not true. The truth is, everyone is wrong and the sky is not green. And that you're right and the sky is blue. That's the answer. Everyone's lying to you. (laughs) So to explain why they do this, you know, people find it hard to believe. But again, like I just said, most people are abusive. They are. And they're toxic. And if you think about it, in most cases where, you know, think about most cases where you find out somebody who was accused of being abusive turned out to be, and people didn't believe the victim, nine times out of 10, when an abusive person is being accused of being abusive, everyone gives them all the leeway in the world. They make up all these excuses, you know, whether it's R. Kelly or Ted Bundy or whoever, everyone's like, no, they couldn't know. But whenever it's someone who's actually decent or nice and they're being accused of something, everyone jumps down their throat. And the reason why is because most people are abusive. People who are abusive and who are narcissistic want to view themselves in a positive light without actually putting the work in and being a good person, but they want to get the praise of being a good person. So when an actual good person comes along who is nice, they hate it. They fucking hate it because not only are you the real deal and they're jealous of you and you're what they want to be, but on top of it, you're a reflection of them. So here comes this con artist who pretends like they're nice, but they're like a puppet master, manipulate things behind the scenes and stuff and they're, you know, evil. And then a genuine nice person comes along. The difference is night and day between the two every single time and everyone can see it. So they fucking hate it. And that's why they're looking for any excuse to pin something fucked up on you. I've been in this situation a lot because I'm an empath and I've been around a lot of narcissistic people within my lifetime and they will try to pin anything on you. It doesn't matter how small it is. It doesn't matter how much they have to stretch the truth, but if they can just claim that you've done something fucked up, it makes them feel better about themselves. And it's that stupid, toxic idea of bringing everyone else down to their level instead of just building themselves up, <laughs> you know? They, they don't want to put the work in to, to raise any higher. They'll just, ra- they'd rather knock you down so they don't have to do anything with themselves. Because people don't want to face themselves. They don't want to look at their own reflection. So, you know, since that is, that is how abusive people work, you can research on it when you multiply that and when you recognize that that's actually very common that most people are like that to some degree that's why you get situations where a real victim is saying I'm being abused and people don't believe them because they want to believe that that person's a liar it's very sick when you think about it it is and people find it hard to believe but give me another reason why nine times out of ten an innocent person is accused of something and everyone jumps down their throat. But when somebody who's actually abusive is accused of something, everyone gives them all the leeway in the world. That's the fucking reason. Because look at all these situations where you actually have a toxic, abusive culture, like with police. They look away when a cop does something fucked up because fucked up people protect each other. Or you look at toxic work environments where the good workers who are trying to do their job, if they come in late, they get reprimanded. Whereas all these other fuckheads come in late no one cares you know it's shit like that fucked up people look out for each other even when they don't know each other because it's just this unspoken rule and I've seen it all throughout my life so that's why I said in the MatPat video when you're going to people about your problems that you should look out and pick the right people to talk to fill out everyone who you speak to before you tell them the real shit that you've been through because most of them aren't there to help you. It's the opposite of what people teach you growing up, but people are not there to help you most of the time. People are selfish. People are narcissistic. They care about themselves. So finding people who actually care about you and will help you is very hard. And you, you'll run into a lot of optimistic people, you know, who seem like they're nice, but notice they never want to have any negative conversations with you or they don't want to talk about people's psychology or why they do the things that they do. Or it's, it's like what I said about Markiplier. Anybody who says, let's keep the morals out of the discussion has a lack of morals to begin with. So you need to look out for these type of things. And you can't do that if you keep giving people the benefit of the doubt. Which brings me back to my main topic of why you shouldn't be giving people the benefit of the doubt. Why you do need to believe in your opinion. 
if you went through something and you saw it with your own eyes, and especially if it just happened to you, you know, something just happened to you and no one believes you, then you have to remember these incidents. Think about all these situations in your life that you've seen even with other people where they were right the whole time and no one listened to them. Think about that stuff and remind yourself that that's your situation so that you can believe yourself against all those odds. Because how is someone going to ask you, are you sure that you just went through the shit that you just fucking went through? Anyone who asks you that is an asshole. And I see videos all the time where people are like yeah like a friend of mine asked me that like I've seen videos with like rape victims and they're like yeah my friend was like are you sure but you know like they probably aren't you know I think that they've grown since then anyone who asks you that is a piece of shit like don't wait for them to grow and to be better anyone who would even think to say something like that is an asshole and most likely they're not going to change that is a telltale sign right there that you have a shitty friend <laughs> okay i i went through a situation where somebody tried to kill me when i was a kid and i'll talk about that more some other time in the future but I don't want to get into exactly what happened, but long story short, I almost drowned to death because of somebody in my family. And I went to so many people that day telling everyone what happened and that this person tried to kill me, who I later found out was a psychopath, but no one believed me. No one believed me. And everyone said the same thing. Oh, they love you. That person loves you. Everyone. They weren't even in the same room. I went to everyone about it as a kid. And they were like, oh, that person loves you. No, they were probably playing. I think it was a joke. And this person tried to kill me again later in my life. And no one believed me. I thought I was fucking crazy. And the only reason why I didn't convince myself as a kid that I was just seeing things because most kids do and that's reasonable or they just block it out and I did block it out for a while but I never convinced myself that it didn't happen is because another person was there who saw it all go down and they couldn't even believe what they saw but because that other person was there I always reminded myself I'm not the only one who saw it I'm not the only one who saw it it's not just me they did try to kill me but even in a situation like that a bunch of adults telling a child oh yeah that person didn't just try to kill you (laughs) It'll make you lose your mind. You're going to question your reality. So I'm just going to give myself a second to make sure I'm not forgetting anything before I finish this off. I feel like I might be forgetting something, but I did think of one thing just now that I want to say. You know, I've been in those situations in my life where I get a very painful feeling in my heart. Like literally my heart is in pain and it feels like I just got punched in the chest because I'm doing something that I should not be doing but I'm giving the situation the benefit of the doubt. I've been in that situation and I know that other people have been in situations similar where you get that really, that that hard gut feeling that you shouldn't be doing what you're doing or you shouldn't be giving this person a chance. And whenever I've ignored that feeling, everything just rapidly goes downhill. Like it's really a feeling that you should listen to, you know? I've talked before about how people have thin slices and a thin slice is basically your subconscious mind picking up on things that you're not consciously paying attention to. So it's the idea of when you walk into a room, you can feel the tension in a room. It's because subconsciously your your brain is, the brain multitasks. It can pick up on a lot of things at once. So walking into that room, your brain is moving faster than you are or faster than you can even comprehend it. And it can see these people who are giving each other the side eye. It can see these people over here who, you know, are keeping a healthy distance from each other so clearly something went down before you got there your brain picks up on stuff like that out the corner of your eye and things like that and it just breaks down a situation before you can so when you get these feelings you do have to think about it like why do I feel like that what what did I picture and that's why it's so important to revisit fucked up things that have happened to you everyone tells you to just move on to the next thing look on the bright side and all this other bullshit and I don't respect anyone who does that I don't I don't care if you say that type of stuff I don't respect you because yeah it's not good to dwell on the past if it's consuming you but that's because it's consuming you it's important to revisit stuff look at any 
any game that you've ever played. Have you ever played a game and you failed at a level? You got to do it over and over again to get better at it. And sometimes even when you can beat it, if you play it over and over again, you find new shit about it that you didn't know. And you can do it more efficiently or you find like secrets and all this other shit. It's the same thing with your life. If you revisit the stuff that happened in your life, you're going to pick up on stuff. Have you ever watched a complicated movie twice and then you notice stuff that you didn't notice before? It's the same thing with your life. If you revisit it and have the same conversation with yourself about the stuff that you went through over and over again you're gonna notice stuff and then you'll be better off because you're gonna learn your lesson (laughs) but people don't want to do that they just want to live day to day instead of generation to generation they don't want to think ahead they don't want to think long term they just want to go through every fucking day like it's their last and it's so stupid so my point is like pay attention to thin slices like if you get any sort of eerie feeling about something or you, you know, if you tell someone a story and you're like, I knew that that person was going to do X, Y, Z. If you ever say those words, ask yourself, how the fuck did I know that? And then you'll be like, oh my God, I noticed that they did this earlier and that lines up with them doing this. So I knew they were going to do this, you know, shit like that. Anyway, I just wanted to have a random conversation about some stuff that was on my mind. I'm going to revisit these topics because these are very important things that affect people's everyday lives. But this is the end of this video for today. So if you got any thoughts, you can share them. Thank you for all your support. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.